Yo, what is up guys and welcome to another Wilder video and today I got you a tier list for update 5.0 I've not made a tier list for like two months and obviously Obviously so much has changed. It is actually truly unbelievable. I mean, just look at this What the hell is he doing in the broken tier? You know, what is he doing in the broken tier? You know what I mean? So let's take a look at everything. There's timestamps in the description if you just want to see the tier list and Let's start talking about this, guys. Let's start talking about it. So, Scion. For some, it's obvious. For some, they don't get it. Let me explain. The only reason Scion is in the broken tier is because of the inting Scion strategy. While there's, I'm not going to go fully into it. If you want to understand what I'm talking about, just look up my recent inting Scion video. Basically, if you're inting, not getting any kills, reducing your stat, Scion is going to be the best champion to push turrets and provide value, lower your MMR, and essentially get free wins with this champion. So again, I'm not gonna get fully into it. If you know, you know. If you don't know, watch the video. Scion, broken tier for that purpose. If you're not playing on an account that's an inting account, I would rate Scion as an A tier champion. He's good, but he's not like complete, like anything amazing. Next up, we got Set, and he is anything amazing. This champion, I was not exaggerating in my video recently that he is utterly, utterly broken like again it's not normal this champion how strong he is with the new items the hard steel the titanic hydra and honestly set was already an s plus tier champion he already was right and then with this update it brought him all the way up to the broken tier set has never been into the broken tier before but this is his first time entering it and if you ever wanted to give set a try now is the time Watch my video that I made yesterday. Watch my other set videos. Learn how to play him. If you've never even touched set before, I've made a full beginner's guide on set too. Just look up Hell's Devil set guide. You'll see a full beginner's guide and you can learn all of the abilities, all of the ins and outs and everything. Next up, we got a champion that almost made it to the broken tier, which is Mundo. And the, the reason I didn't put him in the broken tier is actually quite simple. And that's because even though he's unbelievably strong right now he has his counters in a way that a champion like a lucian for example he can run away from you a champion like a vein she can destroy you a champion like an oriana can kind of stop you do a lot of damage to you champion you know what i mean like those types of champions can really bully you a lot with range and mobility and then if you have a champion like a set they're not going to be able to do that as much on the set they're going to be able to do that wait i just broke my yeah, okay Okay, um, they're not going to be able to do that as much on set because set has counters to that, right? He can pull them in, he can ult enemies, he has a shield, he has all of that. And then anti-heal as well sort of counters Mundo just a little bit. Not too much, by the way, because Mundo's ultimate doesn't just heal him. It also gives him bonus HP. So even if the enemy has a lot of anti-heal, you're still getting health from it. So Mundo completely broke. You know what? This video reaches a thousand likes. I know that's a lot. I'll make a Mundo video for you guys and showcase to you guys why he's on top of the S plus tier right now. And next up, we got Atrox. Spear of Soj and Atrox, guys. That's the talk that I want to talk with you guys. This is really ridiculously strong. He's already very good, already a very strong champion. But then the Spear of Sojin is like the final secret sauce to the to the pasta. You know, you can make pasta with nice chicken, with, with like a nice Alfredo, well, actually Alfredo sauce, you're not gonna make it, you're not gonna make it spicy. Like you can make a pasta with tomato sauce and stuff like that. But if you don't add that spicy sauce to it, you know what I mean? It's not going to be, it's going to be good, but people are going to forget about it. Same with Atrox. He always used to be good, but now we've taken those spices and we've put them onto him. So now he has spices and that's what's putting him all the way into the S plus two high up. Next up is Pantheon. Pantheon ha has no, he's not really looking for anything in this patch. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't really fit in this patch, but he's so unbelievably broken, the champion itself, that he's still in the S plus tier. The funny thing is, Pantheon not only one shots squishies, he also one shots tanks. And that's the funny thing about this champion. Get a mortal reminder, get a blade of the Rune king, and one shot Mundo. You're gonna one shot the enemy Mundo. It's hilarious how much damage he does. It's honestly hilarious. Like, okay, sure he can one shot squishies, you know, it's a pantheon, but why can he one shot tanks as well? That I don't get. And that's what's making him such a high up champion on my tier list. Next up we got Garen. 
really nothing special again and he doesn't really benefit too much from the items but it's just I mean, it's Garen guys it's Garen he's so powerful in the current meta his second ability is ridiculously strong early game he's very good like early game he's very good with his first ability third ability and second ability he can already turret dive early game and then late game of course he becomes unkillable because of his second ability the only thing that really counters him is true damage um, and the funny thing is you can't even stasis his ult anymore or you can't even dodge his ult anymore because he's gonna get it back <laughs> he's gonna get it right back so that's the funny thing about Garen right now right he's, he's just good Vladimir um, again also Vladimir he's just good he's he, I would say he's weaker than before um, I feel like bruisers just got so much stronger so like of course it indirectly nerfs everything else right so Vladimir falls under the everything else incredibly strong champion still which you know is the reason why he's in the S plus tier um, but just not broken anymore next up we got Orn very very strong with the hard steel as well just honestly overall very good very good champion his second ability is a very good counter to the tanks on top you know to the scions to the sets to the garens to the mundos because because orn's second ability does damage based on the enemy's maximum health and it does a lot it does like 20 percent magic damage of their health which is crazy it is honestly crazy so the brittle does the damage right so that's what kind of makes Orn a very very good pick and then in the late game very good tank good ultimate just overall a good champion to have in your team next up we got another champion that has risen because of the meta i like to call this counter the meta yone while yone didn't receive any buffs he completely counters all of these champions right there like he counters set he counters mundo he well, well garen not really but he counters orn he counters basically the top champions the, the fact that he counters mundo and set already makes him such a strong champion right now enemy pick set pick the yone go play the Dun king and don't give him a chance to do anything mundo especially like at least set can do something but mundo cannot do anything if you see an enemy pick mundo you pick yone in the lane and you're gonna run them down you're gonna run them the hell down <laughs> Next up, we got Shen. Very, very good with the new items, you know, the hard steel, but especially the. What is that other item called? Titanic Hydra. Titanic Hydra Shen. Ui, ui, ui. So good. So, so good. Just makes him do so much more damage. Next up, we got Fiora. Sort of the. the again, the counter to these types of tanks, but the thing is, like, Mundo is so strong. I don't even think a Fiora can only one him. I haven't actually personally matched up against a Fiora as a Mundo myself, but of course I've done that. I've faced Mundos as a Fiora and, and I faced Fiora as a Mundo many, many times before the patch. And I already know this is honestly a bit of a skill matchup, which goes a little bit in the favor of Fiora. Late game, it goes heavily into the favor of Fiora, of course. But now like with the new items, early mid game, it doesn't go into Fiora's favor anymore. It goes into Mundo's favor late game on the other hand it still goes to fiora's favor but i mean is that really worth it like you're only really going to be able to win 1v1s and the question is can you even win 1v1s late game because mundo is going to heal so much he's simply going to out heal your ultimate you know he's going to out heal your ultimate next up we got canon and some interesting fact for you guys about canon he has a 58 percent win rate on the chinese server he has the highest win rate champion overall in the mid lane in the in the chinese server now this is the baron lane and canon counters a lot of the bruisers as well he's very good into those low range melee champions like a renekton darius uh, wukong even yone orn he's very good into those types of champions because he can just bully them early game and then in the mid later stages of the game of course his ultimate is going to be very valuable the only problem however is you need to make sure you have tanks in your team when you pick canon in the top lane don't just first pick canon top make sure you know you have the Vi in the jungle or the Alistar in the support or the Braum you know Fukong make sure you have a tank in your team because otherwise you're just gonna lose next up we got Renekton this is one I don't like personally but I have to give credit to I don't like playing Renekton I don't I've never thought he was a strong champion but I have a friend Baron VG he's a main Renekton and he he, he keeps showing me that Renekton is strong You know, he plays the Renekton, he carries the game like crazy. And then I'm like, how did you do that? You know, I'm like, how did you do that? And then when I actually pay attention to how he plays the champion, he manages the Fury very well. And that, if you can do that properly, if you can manage the Fury and 
properly use the right empowered ability, Renekton is going to be a very strong champion in the Baron lane. Next up, we got Gwen. Again, Gwen countering the meta. Counters Set, counters Mundo, counters Garen, you know, counters Orn, counters all of these types of tanks that cannot 1v1 you. So pick her. If you see that the enemies have picked a lot of tanks, it's just such an easy win with Gwen. Next up is Teemo. A fun fact. Teemo is the highest win rate Baron laner in China, guys. Again, these are really fun. Well, I'm not sure if it's the number one, but it's definitely the number three. He has a 56% win rate. 56! Teemo! And I've always been a Teemo believer myself. I have always thought he's very strong, and it, it seemed like I was right. I have multiple, multiple Teemo videos if you want to see them. And if you don't want to learn Teemo, I still suggest you to watch them, because they are among the most entertaining videos on my YouTube channel. They are really fun to watch. So make sure you watch the Teemo videos if you haven't already. You're going to love it, and then maybe you could play him as well. The thing about him is he can just really bully the hell out of the enemy early game and even in the late game his ult just gives such good vision control not only that if the enemy walks into your ult you know they're gonna be half-lifed by a single ult so they constantly have to go back heal up and then come back just to walk into your ult again in team fights your ult's very very strong so like oh he's just a very good champion and even in the mid late game he can assassinate adcs or or mid laners just go invisible basic attack first ability basic attack ignite they're gonna die they're gonna die next up we got darius darius got a huge buff recently and honestly i should rate him higher than this i mean like i don't really know why i haven't put darius here sometimes i, I forget to switch around the champion but darius definitely sits in the s plus tier bottom s plus tier hitting his ultimate is of course much more much less forgiving uh much more forgiving now and you're just gonna be able to hit those ultimates much more often and he counters the met sort of counters the meta he likes to play against those tankier types of champions too um, just buy a black cleaver get your stacks and kill everyone malphite tank malphite very very relevant in the current patch very easy to play on top of that, AP Malphite, just as relevant as Tank Malphite, but you gotta make sure you draft it correctly, right? Tank Malphite against the heavy AD, AP Malphite against squishy champions. And not just squishy, you wanna pick it into champions that cannot dodge your that cannot dodge your ult easily. Like I was playing Vladimir once and the enemy picked Malphite, I just dodged all of his ultimates and he really couldn't do anything. If he hit me, of course he's gonna one-shot me, but that's if he hits me, right? So you gotta make sure you're careful when you play Malphite. Like it can be a little bit annoying to play against a Lucian or an Ezreal too, for example, because they can just dash out of your ult if they have good reaction time. Camille is okay, but like quite neglected. She's just fine. Nothing too much to say. Wukong, fine. Riven with a Spear of Sojin, guys. Very, very strong. Although she gets destroyed by the Set and the Mundo, so she got dropped down just a tad bit in the barrel lane. Same for Aurelia very strong but she also just gets dumpstered by mundo and set um gragas feels it's actually funny this is the first time almost ever that i feel like gragas is weak and it's actually funny that i'm saying that because gragas has always been the, ty the type of champion you could always lean on right it's like if you don't know what to pick you just pick gragas you go full ap and you carry the game and i really feel like you cannot do that anymore even though they buffed him they buffed him in a way that you can now use your first ability during your third ability but he feels so weak he feels so weak again he does get heavily countered by the meta and the baron lane gragas against mundo absolutely lost gragas against set absolutely lost but even then like even if you're against against the comp you can do well against easily he just feels so underwhelming he just i don't know guys he just really does like, a lot of new AP items got released, and he only really benefits from the Crown of the Shattered Queen. He's just really not that good, guys. He's really not. I'm saying that while putting him A tier. The only reason I'm saying he's not good, because I've always put him in the S plus tier. Because after him, we got Nasus, guys. Nasus is actually a legit champion right now. And if you remember, in the patch 5.0, they buffed the ranges of a lot of melee champions' abilities. Including Nasus' first ability. You know, like, Jax's second ability got buffed too. And some other stuff. I don't know what it was. But like a lot of other champions got buffed. I believe Shen's, Shen maybe. But anyhow. Nasus' first ability has 25 more range. And I played Nasus. And I felt that 25 range. I felt it. It felt like I was a range champion. Like in the lane. you. So let me give you the example of Darius for example. If you're laning against a Darius. 
you can get close enough to him, hit your first ability, and he's not even gonna be within basic attack range. He can only hook you in, or first ability, of course, but the point is, back in the back before this change, you would actually have to get close to Darius. You use your first ability, he'll he'll attack you too. But now you can stay far away from him, use your first ability, and run back. You know, just an example. So like you can actually use your first ability much more effectively in lane to bully the enemy. And I feel like that's the best buff to him. Because of course in team fights, sure, you'll have a little bit more range. But you're not going to feel it as much in team fights as you're going to feel in the Baron lane. Just like I forgot to put Akali in the Baron lane. But Akali is really nothing special in the Baron lane. I would rate her like top 8 here. I don't even want to talk about her in the Baron lane. You know, just like Graves. It's really like, it's some champions I don't really put in. You know, like Jarvan you could put in as well, but they really, I, I don't put everything in, right? Like I've made a video about Holebreaker Kane too, but if I put everyone in, I'm going to be talking for ages. And I want to keep it a bit compact and only put the most important champions. Perhaps some nice picks that I really want to talk about, I'll put those in as well, of course. Um, Jax feels a bit weak. Again, A tier is okay tier. Remember that A tier is the okay tier. These champions are okay. You can play them. They'll always be fine. Kill is fine, is fine, don't get me wrong, but I mean if you're against a set, you're not you're not playing your lane as a kill, you're just not playing it. However, if you just get to level 5 without dying, farm up and you can carry late game still. Vayne, Vayne got weaker indirectly with the buff, you know, they 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 the honey fruit is not as close anymore, so you cannot pop it easily from the enemy. Um, there's a lot of runes to counter Vayne, like the second wind now, it's way stronger than before. Um, Vayne is still going to be good, but quite underwhelming as opposed to before in the Baron lane. Warwick is also fine, Singed is fine. Jace, I honestly just hate that champion, so I'm putting him down below so no one plays him. But Jace also kind of sucks. So, on to the jungle. And I want to remind you guys, by the way, I'm doing a skin giveaway. I'm giving away uh, three skins. And all you have to do to enter is put down a comment under the video. Winners are going to be picked in a week at the end of January. I'm also giving away 10 skins on, on Twitter. Uh, that giveaway is going to end in like two days. I'm doing it with Darkbreaker, with Rift Guides, with Royal, and with Starting All Over. Among the biggest creators of Wilder. So that's a very exciting giveaway. Make sure you enter it on Twitter if you haven't already. Links are all in the description. And if you're already in my description... Follow me on Instagram as well. You may as well. I post some nice... On Instagram, I post real life stuff. So it's not about Wild Rift. So now let me talk about, about jungle. And as you may see, there's no one in the broken tier. Contrary to popular belief, I do not think Kha'Zix is broken. I just think he's... Well, I used to think he's broken. But now, of course, patch 5.0 has changed stuff. Because this is the patch for the tanks, guys. All of the tanks, the bruisers got buffed. And that's, of course, what counters... The Kha'Zix, right? Kha'Zix, you want to pick Kha'Zix into squishy enemies. Into enemies you can isolate and just one-shot. Kha'Zix ain't gonna one-shot a set. You know what I mean? He ain't gonna one-shot a Mundo. He's just not. So, but he's still the best jungler. That's the funny thing. Because of how strong that champion is. Because uh, Same for Evelyn. I mean, moving on to Evelyn. She's not a tank killer. But she's so broken that she's still in the S-plus tier. On top of all of the others. Isn't that funny? I find it funny. Like, I find it funny. Next up, we got Kane. And here we're mainly talking about the blue Kane. But in the current patch, also the red Kane. That's going to be incredibly powerful. Red Kane has gotten significant buffs in the recent patches, by the way. He heals a lot more. His ult will heal him always. Now, even if the enemy dies, he's really good. You can always pick him. You can, this, is, this is your example of a first pickable champion, Kane. Is the, enemy, is the enemy squishy? You go blue cane. Is the enemy tanky? You go red cane. And both are incredibly good. Next up is Lee Sin. Lee Sin got that insane buff. Remember, guys, where they buffed all of his abilities? He's still incredibly powerful. Although he doesn't want to be, he doesn't like playing against bruisers either. But honestly, same story as Kazit. He's so strong that he's just all right, anyways. Even against the bruisers, even against the bruisers, like early game, he can still gank them very efficiently. And He's just going to be fine. He's going to be good. Even in the late game, he can ult bruisers into the team and just do a lot of damage into them. Um, they actually buffed him again. They buffed his ultimate damage to do more damage to a tank as well. So they are buffing him against these types of bruiser tanks too. And next up, same story as the Baron lane. 
we got the Pantheon, guys. And Pantheon jungle is stronger than Baron Lane. Um, that's because in the jungle, you can actually choose which lanes you're ganking. In the Baron Lane, you're always faced up with the enemy Baron Laner. But in the jungle, you can always gank. And he's better in the jungle as well for the reason that he can use his ult, right? Like, he can actually ult in the jungle. Um, which is going to be very helpful to gank as well. Late game, he's going to one-shot enemies. The only problem, however, is in the very late game, you know, when you get those bruisers, those tanks, you're not going to one-shot them anymore. I mean, at some point, he won't be able to. In the mid game, you're still going to one-shot a Mundo. But a five-item Mundo with a thorn mill, with a Randuin's Omen, you know what I mean? With those types, of, you're not going to one-shot him. I don't care who you are, you're not one-shotting him. Talking about Mundo, S plus tier in the jungle. I've always rated him high A tier or even S tier in the jungle because I've always believed Mundo was a good jungler. He has a very fast jungle clear, but now he's even stronger. You're not actually going to build a hard steel on Mundo jungle, but that other item, the Titanic Hydra, is still going to be incredibly powerful on the Mundo jungle. And he's just very good. He's just very, very strong, even in the jungle right now. Next up is Atrox. And um, Atrox is fine. Again, Atrox doesn't like to play against these bruisers, which is why I've rated him just a tad bit lower than before. You know, going for sort of a lethality Atrox bot is really not gonna work as much. Um, so, he is still good, don't get me wrong, like top of S tier, that's really good, don't get me wrong. But I'm talking about him in a perspective of him being S plus tier before. He even used to be close to the broken tier, but like now I don't feel like he's quite there anymore. Riven as well, like right, like this champion has always been high on my tier list, but now she, again she feels good. She feels very good, but I would not say that she's S plus tier. Hecarim, you would think Spear of Sojin. By the way, Spear of Sojin and Riven is also very good, but you would think Spear of Sojin Hecarim is completely broken. It's good. Don't get me wrong. It's very good, but it's not broken. It's really not broken. Um, uh, and. Yeah, it's, it's good. I mean, I don't have too much else to say about him. It's just good. Against Squishies, he's very good. Against Tanks, you can go for a Divine Sunderer build and you're going to be fine. You can always pick Hecarim. Uh, this is a type of champion you can also always first pick. Echo. Um, the only You should only really pick Echo if there's not a lot of tanks. Now, of course, this is the tank meta, right? But the thing is, if there aren't a lot of tanks, Echo Jungle, in my eyes, is incredibly powerful. Like, very, very powerful. Uh, very strong assassination potential. They buffed him recently as well. So, like, if you can, if you want to pick an assassin, but, I mean, you could pick Lee Sin, Kane, Kane Evelyn, and Kha'Zix, of course, but Echo is a good next one. I mean, Pantheon as well, but Echo is a good one as well. Gragas Jungle. I feel like this is the only role Gragas is even playable right now. Jungle Gragas has a good, jung has a good clear. He has a very good gank. And then, of course, in the late game, you have a, like, a lot of burst damage. Um, but mid S tier. Nothing, nothing special, just mid S tier. Volley Bear is also very, very good. Good jungle clear. Great ganks. Like, great gank. The turret diving is crazy. And then also, like, with the Rift Herald, he's very, very nice in turret pushing. Because of his ultimate, like, you can get two turrets quite easily with Volley Bear. But it's mainly about the ultimates with Volibear, to be fair. Like, it's mainly about that. You know, you farm your entire jungle, you reach level 5, you gank the duo lane, you get a double kill. That, that's kind of the idea of Volibear. And you can do it quite consistently, I would say. Diana Jungle is a champion that can one-shot enemies and it can carry games. I would say she doesn't really fit too well into the current meta. She gets countered by a lot of the top picks. But, in general, she's still a very strong pick and can even carry against the top picks, right? She's just overall very good champion. I really suggest you to watch my Diana videos. I actually have Diana gameplays for myself and from some pro players as well, which you should really, really watch to get better on this champion. Zed Jungle was another champion I truly believe in. Um, it's just so good, guys. Like I, I like to play it. Starting likes to play it. Zealous likes to play it. This is a champion that, that just you wouldn't think fits properly in the jungle, but if mastered, can be an absolute menace in the jungle. And that is Zed. A very good ganking, good jungle clear. Late game, your ult will be on like an 18 second cooldown. Just overall, very, very good. He has good jungle secure smiting as well. So it's really the complete picture of an assassin in the jungle, to be fair. Um, Darius jungle, good. They buffed his jungle clear recently. It's okay. His ganking is a bit meh. 
but of course you know when you're in a 2v2 fight early game he's going to be very strong in later stages of the game he's going to be very strong so he's just a very very good champion that skills into the late game and holds his ground in his own jungle Vi is fine although against those types of tanks it's not going to be fine but the thing is though if the enemies have a very valuable target you can just pick Vi and always go for that target but then again the, that enemy can stasis your ult but still worth the it's still worth the try and even against tanks Vi can shred armor with her passive so uh, she's just gonna be she's gonna hold up fine Wukong is also fine um, his ult counters the tanks his first ability with the divine thunder will counter the tanks he's just overall okay it, it, it feels a bit awkward in the current meta i do want to say that much all of the new items are not good on him um, but he's just overall a good champion still sorry for drinking a lot by the way i feel very dehydrated so uh I'm just making sure I'm drinking enough water and you drink enough water as well. You gotta drink like three liters of water. If you're very big, you may even need to drink four liters. If you're very, very small, I think two and a half liters will suffice. But make sure you have like a bottle of water next to you to drink water. Because getting dehydrated is very unhealthy for you. It can cause a lot of headaches. Uh, I'm actually getting a little bit of a headache and that's because of the water. I've had that before too. Make sure you drink water. So Fizz Jungle, find it too boring to talk about. Myla Jungle on the other hand can absolutely 1v9 the game whether you're against squishies whether you're against tanks Nyla can 1v9 Nyla can do it all if you're playing solo queue and you want to master a champion I suggest you to master Nyla like this is one of the craziest 1v9 champions I've ever seen in Wild Div. I honestly couldn't when she got released I couldn't believe that my eyes when I saw her damage and she still does that same damage Twist Jungle is okay with the rune on Zero Cane, it's fine, it's really not amazing. He takes a little while to skill, his jungle clear is very slow. You know, he takes a lot of damage in the jungle, he's prone to getting invaded. But of course, if you do manage to get to that 3 item power spike, he's still gonna be an absolute menace to deal with for the enemies. Now, Lilia, I would say, is not very strong. But Hells, why did you put her in the A tier if she was literally saying she's not strong? Listen. We're in a tank meta, we're in a Mundo set meta, and the way to counter those types of tanks is, is with a Lilia. Lilia does percentage maximum HP damage, Lilia does true damage, Lilia will chunk them down while being able to run around them and dodge everything. So if you're against those types of tanks, you know, Alistar, Volibear, Set, Shen, uh, Jarvan, Nunu, Amum, all of those types of champions if you're against like at least three of them or at least two of them pick yourself Lilia and carry the game okay Renekton jungle good but not great he has good ganking but again like he falls off late game I don't really like it Shivana is good as well especially with the dragon buff it sort of indirectly buffs Shivana just a tad bit uh, She's fine. I mean, she's fine. She does good against the tanks. You just got to get 300 stacks of her passive to be able to do true damage based on the maximum HP of the enemy. And then you're going to be able to shred through the tanks when you're playing Shivana. Gwen can shred through tanks too, but she has an Im incredibly slow jungle clear. Um, so that's the only problem I would say with Gwen. The very, very slow jungle clear. Xin Shao is very good as well. And next up, we got kill jungle, guys. Sitting in the A tier. And this is a secret sauce pick. Because while Kill Jungle probably doesn't have a very high win rate, it's funny because like almost no one really knows how to play against her in the jungle. So you can abuse that if you know how to play her in the jungle, and if you don't, of course I got you with the YouTube videos on how to exactly play her in the jungle. So make sure you check out those as well. And let me tell you 1v9. 1v9 champion. You reach level 10, 11, 12, 13. You gotta farm, 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 farm until you reach that level 15 although i want to warn you guys she did indirectly get nerfed by the update because they made it harder for you to reach level 15 after level 9 you're gonna get levels slower than before so it does mean you're getting your level 15 slower which is an in which is actually yeah you could say an indirect buff to kill pike jungle good not this jungle good uh, any, anyone interesting Fi fiddlesticks jungle is one of my personal favorites still um Honestly, I don't really know why I put him in the B tier. He, he actually should be here, I would say. 
I don't really know why. Like sometimes I just forget champions, you know. I put them in and I forgot to swap them, swap them around. So Fiddlestick is one of them. He should be on the top of the A tier. Not quite S tier, I would say, but very strong. Even against tanks, like... He just does so much damage. He just does ridiculous amounts of damage with that ultimate. And it's it's one of the strongest ultimates in the game. A team-wide fair. Massive damage. Just ridiculousness on this champion. But of course, if you do fill that ultimate, he's completely useless. But you're not going to fill the ultimate. So Warwick, Jungle, fine. Anyone, anything here is fine. Master Yi is actually surprisingly good with the Spear of Sojin. But then again, nothing more interesting than the B tier. Uh, Graves jungle unfortunately completely dead. I remember me and Baron found a completely broken Graves build. I actually put him in the S tier before, but then they they brought out the tank meta and uh, what was it? What was it that killed him? They brought out something related to armor, which completely killed killed the Graves. I, I don't remember what it was, but something just destroyed Graves. So you cannot really play him anymore. Unfortunately, it's just really not that good. Um, Oh, I have such a dry mouth, what the hell. On to the mid lane. This one's going to surprise you a bit, because as you can see, Lucian is on top. Um, Lucian mid lane is really, really good. He matches up against anyone. He, uh, he'll destroy any melee matchup, even a ranged matchup. He'll be able to bully them with his first ability, and he'll, just, he'll do just fine. If you're good at this champion, you can carry the hell out of games with Lucian. Lucian is not really built to be uh, an ADC, I would say. He's more, more built to be alone in lane. He can hold his ground with his mobility, bully the enemy by himself. And that's the thing. Like I feel like in a 2v2, he's a bit weaker. But in a 1v1, he's going to be significantly stronger. Akali, guys. Oh, my Lord. Akali's back in business, baby. She's so strong right now in the mid lane. Although I would say extremely highly skilled champion. So you cannot just pick her up randomly and expect to do well. I think my music just stopped. No, it didn't. Um, you can't just you can't just pick her up and expect to do well. She requires practice. Of course, I do have Akali videos for you guys as well, in case you're asking. And a major counter of Akali is going to be the Twisted Fate, guys, which is also going to be an incredibly strong mid laner. I made a Twisted Fate video recently with a new build. You know, Nasher's Tooth. I believe you go like Lich Bane, Rabadon. Uh, you go for the for the for that magnetic blaster you know you go for those types of items since they remove void stat it's much more easy for you to go for other items that he needs that he's that work very very well on him so pick him up and just absolutely hard carry games on him of course the team the global ultimate is going to be very strong too and in the late game he'll one shot squishes and even tanks he'll be able to stop them in their engages and just really chunk down like 30 40 percent of their hp as well as a twisted fate that's crazy Vladimir does feel a little bit stronger in the mid lane than in the baron lane right now. The contrary was the was was the truth before. I've always rated him higher in the baron lane than in the mid lane, uh, but not anymore. Not anymore. Like I feel like in the mid lane he's really gonna catch up now. Um, and in the baron lane you don't really want to pick him too often anymore because those bruisers are hella beefy right now. Yone good in the mid lane. He counters Syndra very well, which is a champion a lot of people are gonna be playing in the current meta. Um, he's, he just does well into ranged champions melee. He does well into everything because against melee champions he can bully them with his range. Against ranged champions he can engage at the right time with his tornado and all in them with his ultimate. Right? That's the thing about him. Next up we got Syndra. I feel like Syndra is a bit overrated. She's okay, but she's really nothing more than okay. I would say. I mean. The only reason I've put her in the S plus is because I feel like she has more potential to her, but people just need to unlock it. People can't really play her well yet. Um, but once you get 120 stacks, I do want to say, then it's absolute game over. She does so much damage then. It's crazy, especially with that big ass ultimate. Talking about damage, we got Lux next. Of course, very strong champion. The shielding is great for her team, but more the like the catching out potential, even in the late game, 25 minutes into the game. If you get caught by that Lux root, you're dead. She's going to use her third ability, her ultimate, and just... just unless you have a Stasis or a Guardian Angel, you're getting obliterated. And obliteration is also a key for Kazarin, guys. Early game, you just chill. Mid game, you look for opportunities, but still chill. Late game, you run them down. 
We absolutely want them down. Kaisa, it's funny how Kaisa is still in the S plus tier, in the mid lane. What is she even doing in this lane? It's ridiculous. Like this champion, the fact that Kaisa still hasn't been nerfed is baffling to me. Like it honestly baffles me. She's so, so, so strong. You can all, okay, she does get countered by range. Like she does get countered by TF in lane, by potentially a Vladimir, I would say. Um, she does get countered by that kind of stuff. But like Zyra as well, by the way, Zoe. But still, but still, like she just, just, just get your first item, upgrade your first ability and you're fine. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna carry the game. Whether you play AP Kaisa, AD Kaisa, it doesn't matter. She's always good. Next up, we got the highest win rate mid laner in China in the game, which is the Cannon. And I've made a mid lane Cannon video a couple weeks, maybe a month ago, because I saw this coming. He's very strong. Mid lane, he's very, very strong. Like, if the enemy is even a tad bit low HP, Tad bit too low HP, I should say. You're gonna flash ult into them and ignite them and kill them. That's the funny thing. Like the enemy will always be, they always have to be aware of your ultimate, which is gonna make it very annoying for them to play the game. Ganking, of course, very good with cannon because you just go in and you ult. Team fighting, of course, very good with cannon. He really has the complete picture in the mid lane. Next up is Katarina. Katarina is a bit more of a high risk champion, but high reward as well. Still works very well. Oh, oh, I forgot. I broke something. Ah, uh, no. Okay, I'll fix it afterwards. That's not good. Okay, where was I? Yeah, Katarina is good. Zed is good too. Works very well into those ranged champions uh, to counter, like against a TF or something. You pick a Zed, you're gonna run him down. Zoe, always a good champion. Still is. Honestly, no. Well, did they nerf her or something? I believe they did nerf her recently, which did actually hurt her a lot. They nerfed her multiple times, actually. I do remember they nerfed her multiple times. Um, but she's still very, very strong. Yasuo, good. Just good. Nothing special. Just very good. Diana, good. Oriana, good. Zyra got nerfed quite heavily. But she's still good. Although, I want to warn you. You don't want to be careful picking Zyra, because especially now that Aurelian Soul is out, Aurelian Soul can stack on your minions for free. Same as Vagar, same as Scion, same as any champion that can stack on minions, Nasus or something. So you want to be wary of that. AP Malphite mid lane very good as well against those ranged champions like a Lux, like a Kaisa, like a Cannon. Anything like that, it's very, very good to pick AP Malphite and just one-shot them. And even bully them in the lane. Irelia, good. Raga's good. Vegar, only pick Vegar into Zyra. But if you do pick Vegar into Zyra, it is a free win. I do want to say that much. Uh, I, I really need to fix this thing, man. Oh, no. I broke it. My Rubik's Cube is basically broken, and I just broke it even more. Oh no, okay, you know what? I'm not touching you. That's what that's what she said. Good god, what did I do? Oh man. Um Annie sucks so badly, especially with the crown of the Shattered Queen. The addition of that to the game absolutely killed Annie. You cannot have any moments anywhere. An enemies just buy that item and your ult is nothing. You're gonna have to proc it with protobelt, but that takes and then they still take reduced damage. The whole fun of Annie is gone, basically. Uh, it just It's just not playable. Zix completely sucks. With the rework, especially, he's so bad. He's so weak. Don't play Zix. Um, AP Misfortune, okay. Kill mid lane sucks. Like, Baron lane you can play, jungle you can play, but mid lane don't. You want to have pressure in the mid lane. You don't want to be playing kill in the mid lane. Aurelian Soul, by the way. This guy's a funny story. Because I thought he would be broken. Now, I don't know if they've actually nerfed him compared to the PBE. Because in the PBE server, he actually felt quite strong. Of course, I was against bots, but he did feel strong. He really felt stronger than before. But it is possible that they changed him um, in the live server. They actually do that as well. Because, of course, it's PBE, the test server. They're testing the champion. So, um, I do feel like he got nerfed heavily. Because right now, he has a in China, he has a 41% win rate in the mid lane. Just so you guys know. Don't play him. Until they buff him, just don't even touch that champion. 
Next up is the Dragon Lane, and woohoo! Guess what? Wow, what a surprise! Kaisa in the broken tier. Oh my god! Pew! Party popper has been popped, guys. Woo! Of course, she's in the S plus. Uh, not even S plus. Broken tier. AP Kaisa, attack damage Kaisa. Any matchup, she's good. I mean, of course, she can struggle against a, against an Ash or a Caitlyn uh, because of the range. But like, even even still. It doesn't matter. If you catch them alone, you're just always going to kill them as a Kai'Sa. Next up is Ezreal. Much harder champion to play than the Kai'Sa. But can be very, very strong. If you're able to hit those first abilities, those ultimates and stuff, he's very, very powerful in the game right now. He really does a lot of damage. So just a very nice champion to pick, but, but very hard. One of the hardest ADCs to play in the game. Keep that in mind. I have a million Ezreal videos if you want to see that. Even AP Ezreal videos. I have that as well if you want to play that. So you can check it out if you want to. And a champion that has actually surprised me with it, with her power is Zaya. I've all, I, I hate Zaya. Like, I hate that champion. I find it such a boring and stupid champion. But I got to admit, she's very strong right now. It's a very, very powerful champion. Especially in, the, in this tank meta. Like if Amundo is chasing her now, she can get stacks on him for free. And just root everyone in the path. She's very, very powerful right now. So if you ever wanted to pick up Zaya, now is your moment. Jin is okay. I still think he's S plus tier. Even you know, even against the tanks, you just go more to reminder, he's gonna do fine against them. Jin is just good. Like his root is good, his ult is good. Everything is just good about Jin right now. He's very, very strong. He's overall a very strong champion. So that's why I've put him in the S plus tier. Against Squishies, he's like broken tier. But against the tanks, I would reduce him to the S plus tier. Um, next up, we got Tristana. She's fine. Early game, she will struggle against a lot. But mid late game, even against the like, she can destroy tanks. She can destroy Set. She can destroy Mundo. She can destroy all of those tanks. So that's the thing about Tristana. She has so much range. So the moment the enemy Mundo decides to go in, Tristana is just gonna stack like crazy on him with her superb range. And when she gets full lethal tempo or conqueror stacks, she's gonna go ham on the enemy team. And you as a Mundo are not gonna be able to tank Tristana for a long time, even if you build counter items against her. She just needs a mortal reminder, six stacks of lethal tempo, and you're just, I mean, you're gone. Very soon you're gonna be gone. Lucian, even though I don't suggest, even though I don't really see him as an ADC, of course he is an ADC, and he's a good one as well. He's actually a very strong ADC. Uh, he's just a bit overtuned, I would say. I feel like he does need to get nerfed. He's just very, very strong. Like, if you play with a Thresh or something and the Thresh gets one hook in, Lucian jumps on you with his third ability, second ability, basic attack, first ability, basic attack. You're just, you know, you're taking so much damage with the Kraken Slayer, too. Uh, you're probably gonna die from that. Even with a champion, with an enchanter, like a Nami or something, he's just so damn powerful. It's just crazy. Next up is Vayne. Only reason Vayne has risen up a little bit is first of all, they buffed her recently. Second of all, secondly, I should say, the tank meta. It's all about the tank meta right now, and Vayne counters the tank meta. So I'll make a Vayne video for you guys very soon because she's very, very powerful right now. Nyla, same story, but Nyla is actually a bit of a different story because both Nyla and Vayne get bullied early game, but Nyla gets bullied a whole lot harder than Vayne in the early game. But in the late game, I would say Nyla is stronger than Vayne. She's just ridiculously strong late game and even in the mid game she'll be able to do very well into tankier types of champions like if the enemy picks an alistar or thresh support or something like that you can just pick nylan after one item you'll be able to 1v1 that support and just really start trading with them um caitlin is fine she's good does struggle a bit into those tanks but she's fine zeri is very good actually uh just very good varus is good Jinx is good. Ash, I'll make an Ash video soon. I found a new Ash build that's actually useful. Finally, I found an Ash build that you can actually play in the game without just getting run down every game. Draven, I think, really sucks right now. Even though they in, they did buff him, so the gold you gain from Dra Draven's passive does not count towards the bounty system of the turrets. So you can get really fed as a Draven and still have the the bonus gold bounty system turned off so that's a good thing about draven right now um twitch meh i don't like twitch corky i don't like him misfortune just don't play misfortune right now just really not good in lower elos perhaps she's like a tier but she's really not that good saver also sucks samira is also not in a good spot in the current meta 
Akshan, I mean, to be fair, yeah, I mean, he's not C tier, it's probably like some somewhere. I mean, it probably looks more like this, something like this, the, the tier list. Next up, we got the support tier list, and... Yeah. What can I say? I mean, what can I say, guys? Is there really anything I can say? There's, there really isn't. Yumi is broken. Way too many stats for a support. You never die. This champion is stupid. I've been saying all of this stuff for two years already in all of my tier lists. Blah, blah, blah. That's the story about Yumi. Next up, we got Pike. Pike has risen, guys. Pike has risen in power. This dude is unbelievably strong right now. That third ability will stun the enemies for over two and a half seconds late game. Now, that's crazy. The flash combos are also crazy on this champion. You know, with the first ability, with the third ability. All of these flash combos are very... Wait, did I actually break this cube? No. Oh, I actually broke it. No. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, oh, I didn't. Oh, my. Look, it looks like. Doesn't this look like I broke it in the middle? But apparently all of them look like this. But it kind of looks like it, it, it's not supposed to look like that. But okay, no, okay, it's not broken. I, I'm. Oh, I just need to finish this video and fix this stupid cube. We just Pike invading enemy jungle, ganking. Oh my god, the ganking is the real deal. That is. The second ability gives you so much speed, and you can just gank like crazy on Pike right now as a support. Gank the Baroning, gank the mid lane, gank everything, and you just. Even in the late game, your ult will do like a thousand damage, which is unbelievable. It's crazy, crazy amounts of damage. Next up is, is Thresh. Thresh is really powerful for a different reason. He's very tanky. Early game, he's very strong. Very, very strong. Um, he can trade with almost any ADC, almost any support in the early game and win the trade. Late game, he becomes very tanky with, it, with armor. Um, and does a lot of damage as well because of the ability power he gains from his passive. And then if you're able to land hooks properly, Thresh is a gold mine for kills. You can get so many free kills as a, th as a Thresh. Lulu is a bit similar to Yumi. Right now, very, very strong. Although not as strong as before. I've always put her like higher up in the S plus tier. But I've put her down a little bit. Um, don't get me wrong, she's still very, very good. But feels a bit weaker than before. She really does. So next up, we get uh, Soraka. I mean, Soraka, Soraka. Stupid, 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 stupid. Stupid champion, stupid heals. Really nothing else to say. Very, very strong. Blah, blah, blah. Karma is also very, very good. Um, even against the Bruisers. Essentially, against Bruisers, you're just going to do like 100,000 damage in a game. You know what I mean? You're going to do so much damage. And she is good against Bruisers too, because when they go in, you can root them with your second ability, right? You can root them with second ability. You can use your shield for your allies to run away. You can use your ultimate on them. You can use your empowered first ability. You can use a lot of different stuff to stop them. And Karma can definitely do that. And if you want to add to that as well, you can even build a Leandris Torment to do a whole lot of damage to those tankier opponents as well. Talking about counters for these tankier types of opponents, we got Morgana, guys. This is my secret sauce support pick. I've always talked about this, always. And I will again. Right now, I need to make a video. I need to make a video. I need to make a video. Because right now on Morgana, you're gonna do... You're gonna do ridiculous damage every game as a support. And of course, you know, the tanks go in. You're going to use your second ability. You're going to root them. You're going to ult them. They cannot do anything. They're not assassins. You know, Mundo is not an assassin. Set is not an assassin. They will go. They will walk into your team. So that's perfect for you. Just root them. Use that pool of, of death of her. The purple pool of death. I need to make a video. I need to make a video of it. Like, you guys probably don't believe me. Watch my recent... Mor what, act not recent. Watch my Morgana videos. The support Morgana videos especially. And you'll see yourself how broken she is right now. 
Lux support, good. Not as good against the tanks, but just good. In the dragon lane, you can get a lot of catches, a lot of kills. In late game, you can one-shot squishies. Sona, again, for me, I'm never playing Sona in my life ever again. Uh, for me, she's horrible. But for your average player, she's very good. Especially in the current meta, she's going to be incredibly good. Healing and shielding all of those bruisers. It's essentially the perfect patch for Sona. Like This really is the perfect patch. The bruiser meta. Having a Mundo with a Sona, she, like Mundo is just never going to die. But again, I'm not playing Sona. I refuse to play such a brain that champion now. Janna, also very, very strong. Just the champion itself has such a strong kit. Her ult is super powerful, pushing enemies away. Oh, something I forgot to talk about with Syndra. Um, her, her third ability is very strong. She counters all of those engaged types of champions. Like, let's say um, Katarina wants to go on you with her ult. You just push her away. Let's say... Uh, Pantheon goes on, you push him away. Let's say Riven engages on you, you push her away. Hecarim, push him away. You push everyone away. That's a good thing about Syndra as well right now in the game. So keep that in mind when drafting Syndra too. She's very good at pushing people away. I haven't even put Syndra... I haven't even put... Wait, what? Am I on the wrong list? No, I'm not. I haven't put... Um, this champion... What is this champion called? Zyra? Zyra on the list. I would rate Zyra... Somewhere here. Yeah. Zyra is okay. She's actually very good into those bruiser types of champions. But still, I don't know. I don't really like this champion too much. I don't think she's very strong. Set support, very, very strong. Although I only recommend you to play set support if you're playing duo queue. Because you gotta you gotta play together when you play set support. You know, the whole power of set support is using a flash combo on your third ability, stunning enemies onto your minions, and then having a in, having a follow-up of your ADC. He goes onto them as well and just destroys them. Leona is great. Nami is great. Adastar is good. Swain is actually very good right now. He works very well into those tankier matchups as well. Just, you know, just go for tank yourself and build a Leandris or something. You're just going to be burning those tanks. AP Malphite support is good. Senna support is good, especially into this Bruiser meta again. Nasa support is a funny pick, um, but does work very, very well. Ash support still works very good. And then after that, you know, Misfortune, Seraphine, Rakan, meh, meh, meh. Did I forget, did I forget support champions? It, it feels like I've put too few in there. Perhaps Syndra support, um, really nothing special, like somewhere next to the Zyra, I would put her here. I really feel like I must have forgotten like actual supports, right? Surely I forgot some champions. It doesn't actually look like I did. I mean, you can play Shen support, you can play Teemo support, you can play a lot support, but these are actually the main champions. I really didn't forget anyone, wow. I mean, Gragas support somewhere. Actually, not here. It would be like here. But again, I mean, you can put a lot here. So this is going to be my tier list for everything. That's going to be it for the video. I'm going to fix this Rubik's Cube. I hope whatever you're doing is more joyful for you than what I'm about to do. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you all in the next lot of video. Bye-bye.